Greetings, fellow primates. Jim the Ape here. And I wanted to preface this response video with a couple of related disclaimers. The first is that the clips of the original video that I'm going to be responding to may seem a little choppy, and that's only partially due to the fact that said video does contain quite a few jump cuts. And the reason for this, which ties into the second disclaimer, is that the original video is now set to private on YouTube. So what I had to do was I had to download Vernaculus's response to this video and painstakingly edit all of the clips that Vernaculus used to basically reconstruct what the original video looked like in sequence. And that leads into my second disclaimer because I feel like a lot of, maybe not a lot, but definitely some of the things that I'm going to say in this video will probably be similar to what Vernaculus said in his response video, but I will do my best to put my own flavor on it, and uh, I will definitely link Vernaculus's response in the description, and you should definitely check it out after you're done watching this video. So, without further ado, let's get started. I'm sorry. Shouldn't you be saving your apology for the end of the video? You know, after you've said all the stupid shit? I'm sorry for not doing enough to ensure success in a world that tries so hard to destroy, discourage, and beat you down. Okay, so we're only 12 seconds into your video, and already we're starting with the oppressed victim complex. And it's funny, because you say, I'm sorry for not doing enough to ensure your success, when, in reality, everyone is responsible for their own success. That's how democracy works. That's how meritocracy works. That's how capitalism works. And I could go into a huge ramble about any one of those things, but let's continue with your video. You're my little girl, and one day you'll be a woman. Plot twist! Yeah, actually, it turns out that he's talking to his hypothetical future daughter. And as creepy as that sounds, he does eventually change gears and get into the meat of his message, what he's wants to talk about in this video, but I thought I'd leave this intro bit in so I could poke fun at it. Let's continue. So that means that you'll make 78% of what a white man can make. Yeah, this brings me to a semantics issue that I have with the repeatedly debunked wage gap myth. Now, it's referred to in different terms by different people, Sometimes it's called the wage gap. That's the most common. It's also referred to as the gender pay gap. And uh, in this case, we have someone referencing it and saying that a woman will make 70% or whatever of what a man makes. Now, what it actually is, is an earnings gap. It's not an inequality of opportunity. The opportunities are all there, and as of the Equal Pay Act of 1963, it is illegal to pay a worker less money on the basis of sex. So if this wage gap was what feminists represent it to be, then the employers would be guilty of a crime, it's something that is illegal, and they should be reported to the authorities. But that's not it. It's an earnings gap that happens because of a variety of factors. And people like Christina Hoff Summers can go into great detail and cite a lot of you know good scientific studies. But the basics are that women tend to work less hours than men on average. They tend to go into different 
fields of study and different lines of work than men because they have different interests than men, naturally. And you can complain about biology being sexist all you want, but humans are a sexually dimorphic species, and part of the biological differences between men and women is that evolutionary psychology dictates that men and women tend to have different interests. And perhaps the most prevalent contributing factor is having children. It takes a great toll on a woman's body to have a child, and it makes it hard to work most jobs during the later stages of pregnancy. And, of course, a lot of women prefer to be at home with their children after they're born. And that's why maternity leave is a thing. And a, a lot of women choose to carry that into working less after they've had children or even stop working altogether. And that's their choice. Who am I to judge? But the point is that there are reasons why in a meritocratic capitalist society there would be a difference in the amount of money that women earn on average and the amount of money that men earn on average. It's not an inequality of opportunity. It's an inequity of outcome. And the only way that you would get it to be exactly 50-50 is if you forced it to be that way. And that wouldn't be very fair, now would it? All right, now let's get back to the video. Wait, wait a minute, that's not right. Ooh, what's this? Have you realized the error of your ways midway through the video? Of course you haven't. Go on. Because you're a black woman, so that means that you will make 64% of what he can make. Of course you had to bring race into it. Look, dude, Asian men are making more money than any other demographic of humans, on average. And I wonder if that has anything to do with whatever truth there may be in the stereotype of them being awesome at math. When you're at school, when you're working, when you're at an interview, you're going to have to be twice as good in order to get half of what you deserve. Deserve is a dirty word, my friend. It denotes entitlement. And yes, in order to succeed in a capitalist meritocracy, you have to work hard and earn the qualifications to get to wherever it is you want to be, your dream job, if you will. At least that's how it's supposed to work. I'm not denying that nepotism is a thing. And that's... That's the truth. It's 2015, y'all. Why am I making this video? Ha <laughs> ha! Vernaculus already pointed out to you that it's 2016 now. Your argument is invalid. 2015 was so three weeks ago. Feminism. That's apparently a very controversial word. People hear it and they get nervous. That's because feminism isn't just a word. Swizzerdink is just a word. It doesn't mean anything because I just made it up. And of course, it's possible that I've just stumbled upon a word that means something in another language, but to my knowledge, it's just gibberish. But words in the English language, of which feminism is one, are signifiers. They're meant to convey a concept of an object, of, uh, you know, of an action... Or something. It's the same reason why when you're telling a story about a dog, for example, you can communicate that something happened with a dog and the person that you're talking to will have a picture in their mind of the events that you're talking about. And it they might not be picturing the exact breed of dog that the dog in the story was. But they have the general idea in their mind. That's what words are. They're used to signify communication. And to be able to communicate stories and ideas. Kind of like I'm doing now. 
feminism is not simply a meaningless word. It is a signifier for an ideology. And that ideology is based on lies. Lies like the wage gap, which I've already talked about in this video. Lies like patriarchy and rape culture that are these ideas about how the world works and how the system in place is like this big conspiracy to oppress women. And when pressed, they really don't have evidence for these claims. They just assert it. Like Steve Shives did in the video that I responded to. They just say, oh, well, well, just look around you. Like, women are being so mistreated. Look, just look, you know, just look around you. And it's the same argument that creationists use to argue that the world must have been created by a god. And similarly, they have no evidence for those claims. And oddly enough, feminists seem to be even worse than religious people when it comes to ducking any kind of conversation or debate on the topic. But that is why feminism is so controversial. Because surprise, surprise, when you have an ideology that says that all men are pigs and that all women are victims, some women are going to say, no, not me, I'm not a victim. And some men are going to say, fuck no, I'm not a pig. But what do I know? I'm not a man or a pig. I'm an ape. They'd be like, oh my god, women are taking over the world. Oh my goodness, here comes the angry woman. <gasps> Did she say she doesn't need a man? I don't give a fuck if a woman does or does not, quote, need a man. But of course, I prefer that a woman be independent. Not just because, frankly, everyone should be independent and be happy with themselves regardless of their relationship status, but also because that reduces the likelihood that that particular woman will financially take advantage of a man, which unfortunately is something that a lot of women are currently doing and have done in the past and get away with it. And did you ever stop to think that maybe the whole angry woman stereotype exists for a reason? Y'all need to stop with that type of foolishness because half of what be coming out your mouths ain't true. Oh, really? I'm glad that you can decide for everybody else what is and isn't true based on your subjective opinion and with no empirical evidence to back you up. If y'all really think about what people be saying about feminism, it's just outrageous. Let's clear up some space for just a, a quick second. All right, here we go. Feminism is the struggle for... Oh, here it comes. Say it with me, everyone. Political, Political social, social, and economic, economic equality, equality of, of the sexes. Sex. Women are equal to men. Not biologically. But yeah, they should be treated equally under the law which means neither should have their genitals legally mutilated at birth, neither should have to conscript themselves to war in order to get the right to vote, and both should have due process and be considered innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt when accused of a crime, no matter how horrible that alleged crime may be. Women are capable of doing what men can do. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. In other words, I'm all for the spirit of healthy competition. Now, what's the issue with that? The issue with that, as I've stated before, is that that's not all that feminism stands for, if indeed feminism stands for those things at all. Like I said before, feminism is an ideology based on lies like the wage gap, patriarchy, and rape culture. So, that is an issue for anyone who's skeptical enough to question those ideas, or who has enough self-respect 
to not want to be placed in the victim box if they have a vagina or the perpetual perpetrator box that they would be placed in if they have a penis. Unless you're sexist. You just broke my irony meter, dude. There's no one more sexist than feminists. And there's no one more racist than race baiters. <laughs> just kidding, because we all know that doesn't exist. That's just a myth. What, sexism? No, sexism is a real thing. Like I just said, feminists are largely sexist. But the things I mentioned before, the wage gap, patriarchy, rape culture, those are myths. 20% of the House of Representatives are women. This means that out of the 435 people who are responsible for making laws in this country, like, I don't know, what women get to do with their bodies, 362 of them are men. That's sick. Oh, God. My stomach hurts. No, that's not sick. What is sick is the idea that you think that voters that women voters should vote for politicians based solely on their genitalia. In fact, that might be one of the most sexist things I've heard all day. Because it assumes that women don't have the intelligence to vote for someone based on their positions on the issues and based on who they think would be a good candidate for whatever position it is, Senate or House of Representatives or whatever, and that they should be voting solely on the criteria of genitals, which is really interesting to bring up in 2016, an election year where one of the possible presidential candidates is Hillary Clinton, who is, in my estimation a corporate shill whose opinions change based on polling numbers and who constantly makes a talking point of the fact that she has a vagina and accuses her detractors, like Trump, of being sexist. Now, in case it's not obvious, I have no problem with there being a woman president. But... Could there please be a better first woman president than fucking Hillary Clinton? I'm a Bernie Sanders ape myself, and if we apes weren't prohibited from voting by your speciesist government, then I would walk my big hairy ass into a voting booth and vote for him in a heartbeat. But that's off topic. Let's get back to your video. If I rape a woman today... Whoa! I do not need to hear about your rape fantasies, bro. One of the first questions people will ask is whether or not she was wearing something provocative. If by people you mean the police, then maybe. But I doubt it'll be one of the first questions they ask. And if they do, it's because they're gathering information. That's how you investigate an allegation to determine whether or not the crime actually took place. You gather as much details as you can and, you know, reconstruct the events and figure out what happened by asking for as much detail as the person can provide. And, of course, searching for physical evidence. But if someone who isn't the police asks that question, which... I have never heard in my life and I would ask you to find me an example because as far as I know it's just a straw man that feminists make but if someone did ask that then it's possible that their motives aren't accusatory uh, because some people have made the analogy that certain actions can be precautionary against certain crimes, like locking your doors can be a precaution against being burgled. Similarly, some people have said that 
Among other things, dressing modestly can be a precaution against rape, although I think a far more effective precaution would be to take self-defense classes and to have some kind of mace or stun gun or something on you. Or, you know what, maybe they're just an asshole. But being an asshole, one person being an asshole does not mean that Everyone who even remotely looks like them or shares characteristics with them is an asshole just like they are. And it doesn't mean that there's a widespread systematic problem of assholes being deliberately created by society. As if something that you wear is an automatic reason for you being raped. It's funny that you say that because it reminds me of something that I don't know if I've brought up before. It was one of the biggest feminist fails of the last couple of years. I think it happened last year, maybe the year before, when scientists had landed a probe, an unmanned probe, on a fucking comet, which is an incredible scientific achievement and probably a breakthrough for scientific achievements of the human species. And it's really cool that they were able to do that. But all the feminists could talk about was the fact that one of those scientists had chosen to wear a shirt at some kind of press event that had drawings of women on it that were sort of scantily clad or whatever. So all feminists could talk about was how sexist this guy's shirt was and they literally they committed every bit of harassment that they accuse other people of doing on the internet and they literally brought this man to tears there was a video where he apologized and he was literally in tears because of the harassment that he had received from feminists so in a way, I always think of that story when I hear someone say, you know, just because of what she was wearing, she wasn't asking for it. Well, that scientist, that poor scientist, I forget his name right now, but just because of what he was wearing doesn't mean he was asking for it. Sorry for that diversion. Continue. Oh my God. People actually think these thoughts. As women of color, particularly black women, have stepped up for black men for centuries. All right, so it's about time we do the same. Feminism needs to extend itself to addressing issues that women of color face. For example, issues surrounding the acceptance of natural hair in the professional in the professional world. You trying to tell me that if Flotus Michelle Obama were to lock her hair, that she'd be accepted as one of the most positively influential people in this country? Come on now. You know better. Okay, I don't know what any of what you just said means. But I can tell you that I don't give a candy-coated fuck what Michelle Obama does with her hair or pretty much anything else. Women are some of the most prominent voices that get snuffed out in the professional world. For example, when Matt Damon tried to explain to Effie Brown so I, so about I diversity they look like one thing, in the they filmmaking business. That we don't want. And we're talking about diversity. The funny thing about diversity, my friend, is that no one person can be more or less diverse than any other one person. Diversity is, by definition, a group concept. Now, for example, since the Matt Damon, Effie Brown conversation was related to movies and such, if there was a movie featuring an all-white cast, that movie would be no more or less diverse than a movie with an all-black cast. There seems to be a demographic of people who are racial minorities and therefore believe themselves to be experts in all racial issues and diversity and stuff like that. 
Obviously, not all racial minorities are like that, but, well, you. You're one of them. And what these people fail to realize is that the amount of melanin in your skin should matter about as much as your hair color or your eye color, which is to say jack diddly shit. But I'll tell you what. How about you show us all exactly what silencing someone would look like in video editing format. You do it in the casting of the film, not in the casting of the show. For those of you who missed it, he just whispered under his breath, Okay, you shut up now. Which is pretty ironic, considering earlier he was whinging about women of color being the most prominent voices snuffed out when he just silenced a white man. And he completely lacks the self-awareness to see the irony in that. Then again, my irony meter is already broken, so even I couldn't tell you how ironic that was. Women of color are often portrayed as angry for saying exactly the things that I'm saying right now. Portrayed as angry or correctly observed as being angry? Just because you're sitting there sipping coffee, acting calm for the most part, doesn't make your bullshit stink any less. Transgender women of color are one of the largest muted groups in our country facing violence today. Congratulations! I have no idea how to identify what was the dumbest part of that sentence. And if you're going to assert that they face violence, I'm going to have to say citation needed. Because as far as I know, the most common problem that they face is just people kind of being assholes to them and not respecting their identities or their preferred pronouns. That's about it. They're beaten, humiliated, verbally abused, and murdered day in and day out, and no one seems to be talking about it. Except you, and probably hundreds if not thousands of feminists and social justice warriors. And again, citation needed, because now you've brought up murder... And I would like to know the statistics on that. What's the stats for transgendered people being murdered? Like, how often is that happening? It, it, has there been a study? Uh, come on, you got you got to give me something more than just these these baseless claims. How about this? Instead of calling somebody faggot or tranny, fucking tranny faggot. See. It's a well-known fact about human psychology that when you tell someone not to say or do something and don't give a reason why, all you're really doing is making them want to say or do that thing more out of rebellion. And I guess it also applies to super intelligent talking apes. So when you tell people, don't call people faggots, Unless they really are opposed to that in the first place, you're going to kind of want to make them call people faggots more than they did before. And the thing is, people don't just use that word as a homophobic slur. For example, Louis C.K. has a stand-up comedy routine where he talks about a hypothetical scenario wherein he's walking down the street and he comes upon two men fellating each other. And one of the men takes a break from fellating his partner and says something snooty or condescending. And he has a joke about the word in which basically the punchline is quit being a faggot and suck that dick. So he meant it outside of its homosexual context. So I guess it's a good thing you didn't tell people not to call anybody a nigger. Why don't you just pick up a book or an article just to educate yourself? Okay, I'm pretty sure Vernaculus made that edit there, but it does highlight something that I would like to comment on, and that is the tendency for feminists and SJWs to repeat 
those words, educate yourself, like a fucking mantra. And I think it doesn't so much mean what you would think at face value. I think what they basically mean by it is that you need to educate yourself until you agree with them. Until you agree with them on everything, you have not properly been educated. Just thought I'd clear that up. So that we can start building ourselves up instead of tearing each other down. Yeah, that sounds good on paper, but it's a little weird coming from a guy who spent a majority of his video being excessively negative and fear-mongering. You'll notice that at the end of his video, he's going to throw out a bunch of supposedly positive, feel-good one-liners, but it all kind of rings hollow when you compare that to a majority of the rest of the stuff that he says. But damn, that ain't none of my business. Damn, that's some good tea. Oh, I was wrong. It was tea. Look at how much I care. Let's start supporting women in our communities so that our daughters, our sisters, our friends, our cousins won't have to think about their gender as weaknesses but as strengths to add on to diversity in this world. That's funny, coming from the same guy who is telling them that their gender and possibly their race are disadvantaging them in this apparently racist and sexist society that we live in. Make up your mind, dude. And start focusing on who they are and developing their skills so that they can take up their role in leadership. Not everybody wants a role in leadership. And those that do are more than welcome to run for office in this democratic republic that we live in. Now that I said all that I had to say, I hope you have a great day and don't let this whole world get to y'all because it is terrible and is undeserving of your hate. Terrible things are usually deserving of hate, or at least some kind of negative emotion. So please be happy and go through life with a smile on your face because there is no other way. Have a great day. Oh, so it's your way or the highway, eh? I see how it is. Anyway, that about wraps it up for this video. I'll probably be looking to respond to a male YouTuber next, because the last response video I did before this was to two female YouTubers. So, if you have any suggestions, feel free to send them to me. I would definitely appreciate that. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that as well. Or you can dislike it if you didn't like it. I support your right to freedom of expression. And you can comment below. Let me know if you liked what I had to say, or if you thought I'm a shithead, and you can subscribe to be notified when I make a new video. So, that does it for me. I'll catch you next time. Stay great, apes. So I guess it's a good thing you didn't tell people not to call anybody a nickel, because that wouldn't make any sense.